Welcome to the NSolver video tutorial series. This video covers the NSolver experiment wizard. We'll create a study, then an experiment, and we'll use the RNA protein dataset, which was included in your NSolver 4.0 download. And during the course of creating an experiment, we will cover sample annotations, background correction, normalization, and ratios. For additional information, consult the NSolver 4.0 user manual. And for steps before or after the experiment wizard, consult other videos in this tutorial series. At this point, we're ready to build an experimental analysis. The samples you include in your analyses depend on the scope of question you wish to answer. However, it is important to exclude any extreme sample failure, since it may considerably skew the normalization and resulting conclusions. For simple experiments, one analysis may be sufficient to answer the pertinent questions. With larger experiments, multiple rounds of analysis may be necessary as you segment out your groups and narrow the questions you're asking. For this experiment, we'll look at stimulated versus unstimulated samples in this gene expression dataset. Let's create an experiment now. Select a new study button on the main dashboard or from the drop down menu and enter a unique study name. Select Save. We'll find our new study on the Experiments tab and we can highlight it. Now we'll select a new experiment button on the main dashboard or from the drop down menu and enter a unique experiment name. Select Next. We'll select the code set, Cancer Immune RNA Protein, from the list on the left, and then select the samples we want to include in the experiment. For this example, we'll use all samples in the dataset. Select Next. We'll create annotations now. In this example, we'll create just one annotation category by selecting Add Annotation Once. For basic analysis, one annotation column is sufficient for most purposes. More categories can be added in subsequent analyses. Note that multivariate analysis is best suited for the Advanced Analysis plugin. The point is to create groups, not to separate all samples from each other. Click the field below column name and change New Annotation to Treatment. The column heading will change dynamically to reflect the new column name. Add the specific annotations under the new column. In this example, we will use UnStim to designate the untreated controls, and STIM for samples that have been stimulated with specific treatment. We can enter the annotations manually or copy and paste the annotations from another source. In this case, we'll copy this from our Excel sheet. Make sure that the Excel sheet and the NSolver list the samples in the same order. Select Next. We are now ready to move on to the next stage in the analysis. Background noise in data can be filtered out using subtraction or thresholding. This is optional. Background corrections utilize the counts from negative controls, several of which are included in each code set. These negative controls are probes for which no target is present. For most datasets, background correction will be unchecked initially, indicating that no background calculations will be performed. You can either maintain the setting or choose one of the two general methods of calculation available, background thresholding or background subtraction. If you are working with low expressing data or an experimental condition where certain probes dip below background, then background thresholding is the preferred method. It will prevent the calculation of extreme full change values that result from low or non-expression genes. Background thresholding uses a user-defined threshold count value. All raw counts below this value will be adjusted to it. For more information on the use of background thresholding and background subtraction, refer to the Data Analysis Guidelines for Gene Expression Data or the NSolver User Manual. For this example, we will leave the background subtraction thresholding box unselected which leads background correction off. Select Next. The next step in the process is the normalization of the data. The approach to normalization often changes between analytes, but the goal is the same. The goal of normalization is to remove technical variants and leave only biological variants. In an ideal situation, this process removes signal related to variation in input, sample processing, hybridization times, code set condition, and so forth, but predominantly leaves biologically relevant results. The recommended normalization settings for most analyte types should appear by default. Use the tabs to review the settings for the different analytes. The first step across all analytes 
is normalization using positive controls. They account for technical sources of variation in your data, such as lane-to-lane or cartridge-to-cartridge differences. Oftentimes, other methods, such as housekeeping gene normalization, can account for the same variance, but it is convenient to have an independent set of probes for technical variance. For this example, we will use positive control normalization, calculating the geomean of all positive controls in the sample relative to a global geomean. The geometric mean and the arithmetic mean will provide virtually the same results, except in cases where there are outlier samples with abnormally high or low positive controls. The next step is code set content normalization. Housekeeping gene normalization is the most common approach. This calculation corrects for differences in RNA input and sample quality. We'll start with mRNA, as this is the top analyte tab. The housekeeping normalization window has two tables that you can move probes in between. The left panel displays genes that will be excluded from the normalization calculation, and the right hand displays genes that will be included. Remember, all probes can be used as housekeeping genes, regardless of whether they are designated as such in the code set. For this experiment, to avoid introducing unnecessary noise into the normalization, we will include only housekeeping genes with robust expression levels. In this example, we'll use 100 counts. Sort potential housekeepers on the expression above background and exclude low expressing genes by moving them to the left table using the single left pointing arrow button. The coefficient of variation, or percent CV, may optionally be used to filter out unusually variable housekeeping genes. The percent CV equals the standard deviation divided by the mean of each of the probe's counts across all your samples regardless of group. Outlier genes with much higher percent CV than other housekeeping genes may not be stably expressed enough to use as normalizing genes and may be removed just as we did for low expression housekeeping genes. A more formal approach suitable for peer reviewed data would be to use the automated housekeeping selection methods in the advanced analysis module. More information on advanced analysis can be found in the advanced analysis user manual and in the advanced analysis visualizations training, which is forthcoming in this series. The next step is to normalize our protein content. We can see the protein data by clicking on the protein tab in the code set content normalization. As with mRNA, there are several different methods for normalizing proteins. The best method depends on the biology and the experimental design. Since we are measuring a large number of proteins in this experiment, we can normalize with all our content. Select Next. In creating full change ratios, we have a couple of different options. Selecting all pairwise will prompt nSolver to calculate the geomean of every group versus every other group. There's no clear reference category for this option. Selecting partitioning by allows you to establish a reference category to which you would like to compare every other category. You can also manually select samples to compare to others using no particular grouping method. In a basic analysis, we can also perform a multiple test correction by turning on FDR. FDR stands for false discovery rate. Note that the FDR is calculated only between the two groups being compared. FDR gives you a sense of the confidence of how many hits are real hits. This is usually used with bigger datasets. For this example, we'll select partitioning by. It will default to the annotation we entered earlier, treatment, and we'll choose a treatment type as the reference, in this case, unstim. Select Next. This results in just one ratio to confirm, partitioning by treatment. You can use the checkbox along the right side of the window to confirm or cancel the building of the ratio. You can change the name of this comparison as well. Select Finish. Our experiment will now be stored under the corresponding study on the Experiments tab. Expanding the navigation tree next to it allows us to view all levels of data in the experiment. The raw data contains unprocessed data. This data level is typically used in advanced analysis visualizations. We will cover this in a forthcoming video in this series. The normalized data contains data after normalization and background correction have been applied. In this data table, we'll look for the two types of normalization flags. A positive control normalization flag may arise if there is technical systemic variance. 
individual lanes with a positive control normalization flag may be experiencing a reduction in assay efficiency. A code set content normalization flag indicates that there is technical systemic variance and or input variance in the content scaling factors, such as that which may occur when running highly degraded RNA samples. Refer to the NSolver user manual for more information on the root causes of these normalization flags. To view the normalized data in more detail, select all the samples and click the table button. When we look at the data, we can see that it now has decimal points, reflecting the modifications that have been made to adjust the raw individual barcode counts into counts from which non-experimental sources of variance have been removed. This results in digital, precise, relative counts of genes across samples. Biological interpretation should be done using normalized data. Use this level of data for basic analysis. The grouped data contains groups as defined by the annotations created earlier. Here you can see the geomean of normalized data for replicates within each biological group. This level of data can be useful for visualizations such as scatter plots or heat maps in basic analysis. The ratio data contains full change results and statistical inferences from ratios between those groups. We can use the column options icon to show columns that may be hidden from view. We can also click on column headers to sort them, click and drag to move them, or right click to see other options. As we look at the data, we see columns for mean, this is the geometric mean, standard deviation, and fold change. There are also multiple ways of expressing confidence here. 95% confidence intervals, p-value, which is based on the t-test performed on groups of annotated samples, and FDR. The value given here is actually the adjusted p-value for FDR. We can export data from this level and can use the custom option to pick and choose columns to export. The analysis level has any additional analyses you may have performed, visualizations such as heat maps and scatter plots, which are found in the analysis function, and output from the advanced analysis plugin. Additional information about these tools can be found in subsequent NSolver videos and in the NSolver user manual. This concludes the NSolver video tutorial, NSolver Experiment Wizard. You can always contact Nanostring support and continue your education by following our video training. Thank you.